Hello, wonderful people of the internet. I've done it again. So, uh, quite a lot of you, I'm sure, will be familiar with my Frankenstein video, which I did a couple of months back. And that was when I was saying that my previous opinions of Frankenstein, which were that it was one of the worst books I've ever read, and indeed, I believe, my least favourite one, was a stupid opinion to have. And I am an idiot, basically. Now, previously, I've also said that The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson is also a crap book and not worth your time. In fact, one of my friends said I might give it a read and I said, don't. I said, don't read that book, it's bad. I've reread it. It's not bad. I'm the one who's bad. I cannot believe I had such a wrong opinion. It's it's cost my entire life in in into question. I mean, I mean, what else am I wrong about? Today, we're gonna be talking about why exactly it is I'm wrong and just my thoughts on this book in particular. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Now I would say spoiler warning, but this book is quite an old book and I, I, I'm can say with pretty fair certainty that most of the audience reading this book, at least the um, the Western audience, definitely are familiar with the plot twist in this book. They're familiar with the idea of this book because it's just ingrained into pop culture on this side of the world. I mean, I, I don't even know where I picked up on, on the story of Jekyll and Hyde and the plot twist in it, but I definitely knew it when I read the book when I was around 10. So it's it's, it's been picked up somewhere. So we won't go into that. No, so, so... Right, spoiler warning, but this you probably know everything I'm going to say, or at least the important big spoiler in this book. So, Do Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, 99 pages in here, very, very short little novella. And it's not told from the point of view of Dr. Jekyll, as you might expect. It's actually told from the point of view of Mr. Utterson, who is a lawyer who ha uh, received, prior to the story, Dr. Jekyll's will, which said, if I die or disappear, I want all of my Watley possessions and all of you know, everything I have to go to, to Mr. Hyde, to Edward Hyde. And Utterson was like, that's a bit odd. I don't know who this guy is. And then it's about Utterson finding out who Edward Hyde is and slowly unraveling why Jekyll associates with, with him. You, know, you probably all know that Dr. Jekyll is Edward Hyde and that is the big plot twist that comes at the end of this book. And this will talk in... Uh, I'm not really going to have positives or negatives in this because this is undeniably a very good book and I'm not going to... I'm not going to have any valid criticisms to say. So that is one of the things that I think could definitely affect a person's enjoyment of this book and I think why I didn't like it the first time I read it. Um, a lot of this book it's spent being like, Ooh, what's going on with Dr. Jekyll? What's Mr. Hyde got to do with him? And you're sitting there thinking they're the same person. I know they're the same person. Can we get to that, please? Or at least that's how I felt the first time I read it. This time I just let myself enjoy the slow unraveling of the mystery and it's done very, very well. And I think that you could definitely, you, you wouldn't guess that it, they were the same person going into this, I don't think. But you could definitely on a reread piece together everything that's going on. Um, knowing the latter context. So it's very well put together and what a plot twist it is like this is such a Like it, you know, it was so revolutionary that we still talk about it today We still know about it today just this he's the same person This is him expressing his darker desires through a physical disguise It's just it's so so good and I really really like it So we'll talk about the whole deal with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde because with the other characters Dr. Lanyon, Mr. Utterson, Mr. Einfield all of them. There's not much to say. They're, they're, they're not particularly complex characters. You know, they do the job. They're good vessels for us to go through the story, but there's not much to say about them. Dr. Jekyll is different, of course, because he is the big discussion point of this story. So Dr. Jekyll, his deal that he outlines in the final chapter of the book, which is a letter he's written to Utterson, where he's saying, this is, well, my name is Walter Hartwell White, and this is my confession, you know, that, that, that bit. He's saying, so all my life, I've had these two sides to myself almost. So I've had the side of myself that wants to do good and wants to discover things that will improve humanity. And there's the other part of him 
that he doesn't really go into, but that has these deep, dark desires. I think in the in, originally he described it as impatient gaiety, and I was like, well, I don't think there's anything wrong with being happy, but um, it quickly becomes evident that it's more than that. But he's got these two sides, and throughout his life, he's put a lot of effort into the good side of him. He's become a, 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 a well-known doctor and a philanthropist. He's well-known throughout the community for being this upstand guy, you know? And then, but he, but he doesn't like off his jobs, he doesn't like the life he's got because he's not allowed to pursue his darker desires and so he starts to work on finding a way to shed, it, well, no, no, well no, he doesn't start working on a way to, actually I can't even remember now, I believe he starts working on a way to shed the form he has now so that he can endeavour to pursue his desires and I think the, the goal of his experiment ultimately was not that but to separate the good side of himself from the bad side, he decided there are two sides to man he wanted to separate from themselves, this resulted in the transformation, he transforms and he looks hideous and everyone, well he doesn't look hideous but everyone looks at him and they're like I don't like how he looks but they can't really put their finger on it and that's because he has got no good in him, Mr Hyde, he is all evil and that shows through his face, through his, through his appearance even if there's nothing you could really put your finger on to say why you don't like the look of him. So Dr. Jekyll does this and he starts to pursue his deep and dark desires, not worrying about consequences because he can just drink his potion and turn back into Dr. Jekyll whenever he gets in trouble or whenever he's done doing what he wants to do. But slowly, he starts to find it more and more difficult to turn back into Dr. Jekyll because he, his more evil side is being indulged more than his good side. And so he's struggling more and more to turn back into Dr. Jekyll. He tries to stop that by not turning into Hyde for a while, but eventually he does it again as Dr. Jekyll. He, he just does something nasty as Dr. Jekyll, and then he turns into Edward Hyde irreversibly because he can't get any more of the solution, the salt that he makes his potion with, and ultimately ends in his suicide. So that's, that's his whole arc there, and the thing, we don't really go into detail about the terrible things he does. There are two incidents which we get in this story that we have to go off of to be like, oh, this man is terrible. And that is the first one where he's walking along and a little girl walks in front of him and instead of getting out of the way, he just basically barges into her and walks over her, you know, stamps on her. Doesn't really hurt her, but it's not a nice thing to do. And then about a year later, he beats a well-known community man, a good person with no provocation to death with his cane, which is definitely a more horrible thing to do. And that is what sends the police after him. That's what leads to his eventual downfall. Well, or kind of, because the reason he kills himself is because he can't leave his room because everyone will be like, it's Edward Hyde, get him. So that's why he kills himself in the end. But I remember one of my main criticisms, criticisms being when I first read this book was that I went into it wanting a bit more. I was expecting Dr. Edward Hyde to do a few more nasty things, to go more into the things he had done. But oddly, uh, Stevenson didn't. And I just wrote that off as kind of just making the book kind of mid before, but I decided to think about this because obviously this book is massive. I've read someone describe it as part of the holy trinity of Dracula, Frankenstein and this, and I think that's a good way of putting it because those are all three stories that are very ingrained in our society. Like we all know who Dracula is, we all know who Frankenstein is, and we all know the deal with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. But um, I started giving it some more thought because I thought, well, this is a very good book and it deserves my time if, uh, to consider why I don't like it. And... I came to the conclusion, that might not be right, it's like me with Frankenstein, I started rationalising some of the things I didn't like by saying, like, Shelley intentionally made Frankenstein portray himself as such a good person, even though he's evidently not by his actions, because that, she wanted us to start to notice that, that he was an unreliable narrator. Might not be true, but I fully buy into that, and I want to, because that makes the book so much better than it would be if that wasn't the case. In this case, I think, this strange case, you could say, and I think that the reason Stevenson doesn't go in to... Hides actions very much. In fact, he kind of glances over them. He just says, "Oh, they weren't very nice." Um, is because he wants the readers to consider it themselves. They want to put themselves into the mindset of Jekyll and think, "Oh, I wonder what this guy would do if he no longer had to worry about consequences and could indulge himself in his darkest desires." And you slowly start to think about what that could be. And at least for me, I think the intention is that you start to think about it. And then you realise that kind of the things you're thinking about are what you would do because you can't put yourself in the, fully in the shoes of this person because you don't know what his desires are. So you project yours onto him and then you're like, and you know, you, you can catch yourself and go, hang on, I've got that part in me as well. If I were to lose all, if I were to have the same ability that Dr. Jekyll had here, you kind of discover what you would do and that side of yourself. Maybe that's not true. 
I don't know. But I think that if that is the case, that is a very, 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 very clever piece of writing. A very clever choice if that is the case. And I hope it is, because that makes me love this book a lot more than them just not going into detail and the, 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 the lack of detail didn't mind didn't bother me this time because I knew what I was getting into I was like there are going to be two things that happen and then you follow the mystery and ravel following on from those and so I got to enjoy the mystery I got to enjoy the the four the conversations that this book started within me I got to enjoy that but I can't even remember the I've forgotten what this, the point of that sentence was so we're going to end that there but um that's what I think the intention of that was and I wanted to share that because I thought maybe maybe that could be the case I like to throw my hat into the ring with my own take on that um uh, there's nothing else really to say about this because the culminate you know the, the important part of this novel is the twist I've said the mystery is good the mystery is good the characters all fine Dr. Jekyll is an impeccable character and such an interesting one to think about um this is yeah I've I've run out of things to say that's a lie so I was editing and I remembered a few of the things I wanted to say but didn't end up saying because I didn't write notes down for some reason and I just kind of spoke until I forgot where I was going but I've remembered a few things now that I'd like to mention musical I've not listened to m many of the songs in the musical but I've listened to Alive and I've listened to Confrontation and those songs are so so good I really like even I really I really like how the musical present the um the Jekyll and Hyde and how they're working like in Confrontation they're, they're sh like singing at each other and it's the same person and they turn to different sides of their face and um, the hair falls down the side uh, when they're being Jack uh, Hyde and it's really cool so check out the musical is what I'm saying because that's really really good it's good music and I don't think it's very well known so I'd like it to be more well known because it's excellent and those are the other things I had to say but um yeah I was wrong again excellent book I completely understand why this is a big part of pop culture so we'll wrap that up there five stars of course it's classic I can't criticise it in any really valuable way uh, part and it would be nitpicky to say anything so good job your classic classic i'm sorry that i had a bad opinion now in future i'm going to in the future i'm going to be reading the secret history by donna tart i don't think her name is donna tart well that uh, actually yeah it is donna tart but there's two t's so that probably affects the pronunciation but um i'm going to be reading that which is a relatively old book a modern classic is what a few people have held it as and it's about it's a criticism oh my friend wrote a pill paragraph about this i should know um there's a dark academia it's a study of kind of the i don't even know i know dark academia is a theme in it i i because I, I, i've got nothing to go off because of i've not read the book i can't say and i can't remember the exact points that my friend wrote uh, but I know it's, uh, I've heard it's like Fight Club for Ponce Literary Majors in the fact that um, you're meant, people read it and they go, oh my god, these characters are so cool, but that's not the intention of the piece. Like Fight Club, Fight Club, Fight Club, people are like, wow, Tyler Durden is the man, I want to be in Fight Club, whereas you're meant to be like, oh my god, Tyler Durden is horrible, I don't want to be in Fight Club. I think that's like this in here, people. In fact, yeah, it's a criticism of the dark academia culture that kind of sprouted from this, I think. I don't know. Um, but that's what I'm going to be reading soon. Uh, it's quite long, so I can't promise that I'll finish it. I'll try and get some videos out in the meantime. I'm very excited because it looks really good. I've read some quotes. It sounds really good. Uh, and um, I'll get back to you once I finish it. I will hopefully get some videos in between. I did finish Sex Education the other day, so I can talk about that. I don't usually do show reviews, but I, I do have meaningful meaningful things to say about that show, so I can. Pro it won't be a filler thing if I were to talk about it. But that is that. I won't waste your time any longer. Thank you so, so much for, uh, for watching. I will see you all soon when I will be talking about sex education or the secret. Excuse me. The secret history. And have a good one until then. Bye.